Released in 2014, Shovel Knight is a 2D action-adventure platformer developed by Yacht Club Games. While it was released recently, Shovel Knight plays, looks, and sounds like a game released for the NES. It has become so popular, it has over 2.5 million sales across all the platforms it's been released on. It's also led to DLCs and spin-off titles such as Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, Shovel Knight Dig, and Shovel Knight Showdown. But how and why did Shovel Knight succeed this well? In this video, I will break down how Shovel Knight's marketing and appeal to retro gaming paved the way for its success. Shovel Knight was the result of an incredibly successful Kickstarter campaign. Starting on March 15, 2013, and ending on April 14, 2013, they blasted through their initial goal of $75,000 and raised a whopping $311,502 in just under a month. This success wasn't just luck, it came from sharp and calculated decisions. To understand just how successful Yacht Club Games Kickstarter really was, we can look at a study done by Shahala Gobadi, a professor at Leeds University Business School. The study titled, How to Manage Crowdfunded Projects, Empirical Evidence from a Comparative Study of Game Development Projects, analyzed both Shovel Knight's and Clang's Kickstarters. The study found a few major differences in the way the Kickstarters were run. The first was the stretch goals from both projects. While Yacht Club Games had added a plethora of stretch goals and desirable pledge tier rewards in line with Shovel Knight's development, the Kickstarter for Clang had rewards that had nothing to do with the game's development, such as lunch with the developers after release. Another huge difference was the way both companies communicated with their community. Yacht Club Games had constant communication with the community from answering questions, relaying information and updates, and continually taking player feedback into account. While Clang kept their backers in the dark about updates and progress in the game, it's no surprise that Yacht Club Games was able to form a strong community after such an impressive Kickstarter. However, the other major hook of Shovel Knight was the nostalgia it brought. In Svetiana Boehm's book, The Future of Nostalgia, she breaks down nostalgia into two categories, reflective and restorative. She says that reflective nostalgia is less about directly recreating the past, but embracing the thoughts of it and the feelings it brings. Restorative nostalgia, on the other hand, is the opposite. It deals with recreating the past and determining what the truth of the past is. By following these definitions, we can conclude that Shovel Knight is a product of reflective nostalgia. In How to Play Video Games by Matthew Thomas Paine and Nina Hunterman, they have an entire chapter titled Nostalgia that breaks this notion down. They agree that Shovel Knight provides not just one particular NES moment, but a compilation of moments that together refer to the more collective memory of NES games, rather than to how they actually operated individually at any given moment. This notion can be understood by looking at how David D'Angelo, one of the developers of Shovel Knight, describes how they broke the NES to create Shovel Knight. He covers technological changes such as display format, sound channels, and memory allocation. D'Angelo also gives a breakdown of the artistic changes they made. These include changes to sprite flickering, the inclusion of parallax backgrounds, breaking the color palette limit, and changes to how camera shape Overall, all the changes they made were in good faith to the NES and still kept the spirit of the collective memory mentioned before. The other source of major nostalgia is the gameplay of Shovel Knight, which can be seen by looking at the three games that heavily inspired it. David D'Angelo said in his GameSpot interview that the three games that they drew inspiration from heavily were Super Mario Bros. 3, Zelda 2, and Mega Man. Shovel Knight took inspiration from Super Mario Bros. 3 when creating their overworld map. Yacht Club Games wanted the game to feel bigger and the levels to feel more connected. An overworld map is the perfect way to do that. It gives a feeling of an open world and lets players have choice in the path they take. The major aspect taken from Zelda 2 is Shovel Knight's down attack, where he bounces off of enemies and environments, much like Link does in Zelda 2. They iterated on this, allowing the player to tunnel through dirt blocks and incorporated the down smash into various puzzles. The last major inspiration was Mega Man. At the end of the main stages of Shovel Knight, you fight the corresponding boss, such as Polar Knight or Propeller Knight. This same mechanic can be seen in Mega Man, where at the end of the level you fight a boss, like Cut Man or Bomb Man. The other similarity is the relics in Shovel Knight and power-ups in Mega Man. In each stage, Shovel Knight can acquire a new relic, giving him a new permanent ability. The same thing is seen in Mega Man, where after defeating each boss, the player receives the boss's signature attack. All of this comes together to form a game that glorifies all the best parts of classic NES games. 
or remaining true to the spirit and time period it was inspired by. What started as a simple Kickstarter for an NES-inspired game has grown into a successful franchise. Thanks to their impressive Kickstarter campaign where they formed their community, their masterful use of NES gameplay, art, and music to evoke nostalgia, Shovel Knight has become one of the most popular indie IPs in recent years. After the success of Shovel Knight, it will be interesting to see if other developers look towards the past rather than the future when developing their next games.